the last couple of years have seen an increasing concern about the size, power and influence of the big tech firms such as Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon and Microsoft. Their products and services have an influence on many aspects of our lives and our societies. But is there something about the digitalization process itself which promotes the growth of firms? And if so, is this problematic? Digitalization does promote the development of large firms because digital firms can grow and expand much faster than firms selling physical goods. Consider a product like TikTok. While coming up with the idea for the app and creating an effective algorithm is difficult, once the product is developed, it is relatively cheap to provide it to many consumers. That is because the marginal cost of providing a digital product to additional consumers is low. Also, it is cheaper and simpler to expand into new countries than it would be for firms producing physical goods. Digital companies do not need complex supply chains or local sales network, and the regulatory burden is usually higher for physical goods. Moreover, once digital companies take over a significant portion of the market, it becomes very difficult for new entrants to compete. One of the main reasons for this lies in the network effects that characterize many business models of digital companies. A product or a service features network effects if a user gets more utility when there are many other users of the same product. It only makes sense to upload a video on TikTok if there are many other users who can see it. And it only makes sense to spend time on TikTok if there are many interesting videos for you to watch. From an economic perspective, the issue with large companies is not so much their size, but their market power. This market power gives the firm the ability to distort the market outcomes away from what would be efficient and towards that which is more profitable. Market power also gives incentives for wasteful activities like lobbying and abusive action towards potential challengers. There is also a concern that dominant firms will be less innovative in the long run as they are content with exploiting the market position that they already have. Critics of big tech have pointed out several possible examples of such behavior. Self-preferencing by Amazon, where Amazon displays its own products before those of independent sellers, or the so-called Apple tax, where Apple charges iOS developers up to 30% of every app payment that developers receive from the customers. There have also been suggestions that Google has been degrading its search results to first show links that are more profitable to Google and not those that would have been the best results for the users. Many countries, including the United States, the European Union and Switzerland, have laws that prohibit abuse of a dominant position. These laws, called antitrust or competition laws, also prohibit the formation of cartels and regulate mergers and acquisitions. However, implementing these laws is difficult, especially for novel business models like those of digital companies. There are many who argue that we need stricter antitrust action against the big tech companies maybe with updated antitrust laws, and maybe even going so far as to break up some of these companies. Others counter that the tech industry is one of the most dynamic and innovative industries, beloved by consumers, and that we should be careful not to strangle it with too much regulation and antitrust scrutiny. Whichever path we decide to take, this is an important decision with the potential to determine how the technology sector looks like in the decades to come.